Hello. So we're going to talk about buffers today. And I, yesterday while you were all taking your tests, I was busy rewriting the notes. Um, and so what I'm going to go over today is I'm just going to go over buffers. And the first page of your study set that I posted is just what we're doing today. And so I would recommend to go ahead and do the first page today. Uh, and then what we're doing tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a longer lecture. Titrations is really big. Uh, we can start it today if you feel like it, or we can just say, hey, I got buffers. And so that way, when you come tomorrow, you're like, I've got buffers, I've got them down. This is a big topic. This is the hump. The next three days is the hump. So all of you listen along at home, do your work, stay with me for this week. And we get into next week, it's clear selling from there. Um, yeah. So we're going to do buffers. And, oh, the other thing is your worksheet, which I didn't post yet because I'm pondering something. The worksheet that is due Friday is only on buffers. So I changed it. I took the titrations out. Your lab that's going to be due Monday is going to be like all about um, titration. So let's see. So what is a buffer? A buffer is something that resists change in pH. So your body, your blood has buffers in it. Uh, and that's what it is made out of. All right, I'm going to change my view. So we'll go with that. Yeah, and as we go through this, you'll see. So you can add things to it and the pH will change, but only change a small amount. So this is going to be different from the math you just had on your midterm. And this is why I split and we had that midterm so early on, because um, otherwise students have trouble differentiating between when you have only one thing present. So on the midterm, you only had an acid or you only had a base. Now, in a buffer, a buffer is always made up of a weak and its conjugate. So it's always made up of two pieces. Uh, we're going to do it, usually it can be a weak acid and its conjugate base, or it can be a weak base and its conjugate acid. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's more like which perspective you're looking at. Are you viewing it from the base, so the acid's the conjugate? This this is here because I was watching a video yesterday or listening, and he was talking about at a monastery, um, they would actually check you. I don't know how they tested their auras. And the person who had the most glowing, loving aura was the person who stored, stored, stirred, excuse me, stirred the lentil pot every day. And everybody else would want to be around this person. It was a quiet meditation because they would just be giving off love. Like all day long, they'd just be stirring the lentil pot. And it just has this image in my mind. That's what I was thinking of. Well, you guys are all taking your tests. Is he would just be putting love into the lentils. Um, and so hopefully, as you're making your wonderful recipes today or this week, um, you're putting love into them. Um, it says, why should you care? Because uh, there's buffers all around. A lot of you have taken biology or going into a biological field, uh, and it's all about buffers. And we'll look at examples here. Our body is a buffer system. Um, I think at the bottom of the page, we can, we'll see when we get down there, our body has three different buffering systems. Um, and that was part of when I talked about acidosis and alkalosis and the influences on that. Um, so, Let's look at these examples that I put there for you. HNO3 and NaNO3 is a big frowny face. The question is why? They are conjugates. So a reminder, how do you tell a conjugate? They differ by one hydrogen. But it is not a buffer because there's two keys to a buffer. Not only are they conjugates, but they have to be weak. This is a strong acid, so this does not work as a buffer. The reason is, to be a buffer, you have to be able to go back and forth. You have to balance out both types of assaults to your pH. 
uh, and a strong acid is a one-way street. So A is no good. B does work. And this was a question, um, this is actually a good question. I hope so. Yes. Uh, real quick, the number of oxygens is important. So when there's three oxygens, this is nitric acid. This is a good review for your final. Nitric acid is a strong acid. So the question to ponder for everybody, what is the name of that acid when you lose one oxygen? You should have learned this way back in chemistry 221. You guys remember it becomes nitrous acid. Um, and this is nitrate. We get into this some next week, and this is nitrite. So eight is the ones, like my class, there are those five big eights that I tell you you have to know, and then the eights have one oxygen left. That one less oxygen does make this a weak acid. And this is its conjugate base, because the hydrogen was replaced. And so this absolutely works as an acid. The naming was a little bit extra, but um, again, I keep telling you I'm going to do these subtle reviews for the final. There's like one question on the final about naming. And so if you hear it, it should ring a bell and you'll be fine. All right, on C, it doesn't work because neither one is an acid. So these hydrogens go with the carbon. They don't come off. All that I did was I replaced the sodium with a potassium. And my door keeps opening. Um, yeah, so it doesn't work. There's no acid there. They're both salts. Now, I could make it into one if I removed the potassium and made that a hydrogen. Then this would work because they would be conjugates. And that's a weak because it's not one of the six strong. If you have not made a little note card of the six strong acids, actually, um, that can be useful. I usually only use HCl at this point, and HCl is a strong acid. All right, D is a yes also. So B was yes, and D is yes. And the reason D is yes is So you see the nitrogen, that is a base. It is a weak base. This is a question I believe Aaron was asking me yesterday. So when we think of ammonia, we usually say, and we do say NH3. When you add the carbon on, that takes up one of the bonds. So there's only two hydrogens left, but it is related to ammonia. We add the hydrogen here to the nitrogen. And then this will have a positive, and so the chloride adds on. This is the conjugate acid. So that works as a buffer. So the idea of a buffer is you have to have both pieces. And when we get into the math, the big point that I get to when we get to is these are never, ever x squared problems because we're going to have two pieces. All right. Series or questions before I race and move on. All right. And again, those of you listening at home, I'm dressed as a little mouse today, so you should pause me and go get your mouse, your favorite rodent. You can be any kind of rodent. We'll be rodent friendly. All right. Uh, example 1A, it just says, what's the pH? And 0 0.333 molar, this is an acid. You guys recognize the CO2H, that H comes off. It is not as strong, it is a weak acid. So where would you go to look to find the Ka value? Well, all of you have your computers or phones, you could Google it. To make it best for us, 
so we all have the same answers. Uh, if you remember the last set of notes, I gave you a chart that had, the door's not shutting, uh, Ka, so I know this one, 1.8 e to the negative 5. This is not a buffer. This is a weak acid, but that's all it is. A buffer has to have both parts. So this would be an x squared over the 0.33 because you have only the weak acid. This is the math we did before the midterm. Now we're going to make it into a buffer. And my answer is there. You solve for x. I think I gave you an answer. pH 2.61. And all right. So B is the buffer. And the way you know it's a buffer, well, I changed the words on you. I said, let's make an elixir of, but you have two pieces. You have the 0.333 molar of the acid. And then suddenly I add 0.2222 molar and I put a sodium on there. I take off this hydrogen and I put a sodium on. A question that often comes up, and I wrote it this way on purpose, sometimes you'll see me with the organic ones put the sodium at the end where the hydrogen would have been, and sometimes you'll see me put it at the beginning. It's not a big deal. Don't lose sleep about that. Uh, it's just how it is. They're both accepted nomenclature, and we go with it. This is a buffer. It has a weak acid and a conjugate base. And this is why I solved all the problems up to the midterm with this formula. Because you guys know the formula. So go ahead, write the formula down. You've got it. We're going to be using it for the next hour. Like every problem, we're going to be writing this out. Um, so conjugate base times hydronium over the weak acid, or we can just say acid, or you can just say A, or you can say WA. My door doesn't close. And then we just plug in. So I am going to go ahead and plug in for this one. Um, yeah. So 1.8 e to negative 5 is our Ka. We know the conjugate base this time, 0.222. And so we only have 1x, the hydronium. And then we know the acid was 0.333. And you rearrange. You can solve. You get your x, which is your hydronium. And then you all know the next step, that you would do the negative log. So the trick, the difference, we're not saying trick, that's not a good word. Um, is there never ever x squared. So I should have highlighted that for you where it says buffers are never ever x squared. They're never ever x squared. We will do x squared tomorrow, but these are not. You do the negative log of x and that is your pH. And then we're gonna do one other thing with this before we do number two. Um, and it is, I sometimes will ask you, I do ask you more than sometimes, if your answer makes sense. And the answer, of course, is yes, it makes sense, because your teacher just did it. Um, with a buffer, the concentration of the acid is going to be roughly similar to the concentration of the conjugate base. Is that showing up there? So this just means that they're similar. They don't have to be the same. But because they're similar, the Ka is going to be roughly around your x. So if you look at the exponent, that is going to be where your pH is in that range. So we got a pH somewhere near 5, and we did, which is great. If there's no questions, I'm going to erase. I want you guys to try question number two, or at least try the setup. See what you're going to do. Go ahead. 
You're breaking up. You broke up. Oh, I. Uh, never mind. Yeah, I can hear you now, but I couldn't hear you a moment ago. Oh, I was just wondering, uh, the word that's underneath buffer between the A and the C B, um, that has an arrow point between the two. What's that? Oh, word? that's a squiggly line, meaning they're they're not equal, but they're roughly. Right? They're okay. not the exact same number, but they're in the same ballpark. Okay. Um Yeah. Oh, awesome. Actually another comment, actually I'll just put that on the next page. Anybody else have a question? All right. So I'm going to erase. I'm going to get something to prop my door closed. Well, you guys are trying number two. Here we go. Yeah, that's really funny. I said to my son, I'm going to start taping. I said the doorbell will ring in 15 minutes. And sure enough, it did. Um, I think the salesman must know. She's recording. I'm gonna have to start recording at school and hope that nobody's there. Um, all right, that's information given in the problem. I'm assuming that we have the same problem. Um, it is a buffer. This is my weak acid. This is my conjugate base. Now to solve this one, we're gonna eventually get to grams. But you know it's a buffer problem because the like fourth word in the sentence says buffer. Um, but it's a weak acid with its conjugate base. Let's go ahead and write the formula for this. So the sodium is going to replace the hydrogen. So remember, you have to replace it. So sodium and then that's, this is the lactate part. All right, it is a buffer. Anytime it's a buffer, I recommend you solve them my way. Um, I've done this for 25 years and I'll show you a different way or I'll mention it because online everybody is hooked on this because you know what happens with those online videos? Those guys are like your best friend. It's the same with the tutors. And I get to see what happens when you try and do it on the test on your own or by yourself. Um, and so this formula is our buffer formula. We're gonna plug into it. So we have our Ka, right? That's gonna plug in here. We know our acid, so this is the acid. And because we know the pH, we can change the pH. 10 to the negative pH is your hydronium. Again, this is why you had a test yesterday, because it made those formulas more familiar and more comfortable. All right, so 1.4 e to the negative four equals, my unknown is the conjugate base. So there's only ever an X unknown. My hydronium is 10 to the negative 3.76. And the acid goes in the denominator. Now, for some of you, you can figure out what that number is, or you rearrange. If you're having trouble with the algebra of rearranging, please come to my office hours and say, hey, can we walk through this example? And I'll pull out my board and I'll do it. A couple people did that. Um, a couple people did it right before the exam. 
and I, it made a difference. And speaking of the exams, I haven't looked at the show your work yet. I was still catching up on grading of other stuff. Um, and I had to go to the dentist today, and so I knew I wouldn't have that two hour block of time. I'm hoping to do it tomorrow, uh, depending on what life presents. All right, X this time is not hydronium. X is the conjugate base. So I did look at a few of the show your works, just glanced at them. Um, the people who labeled clearly, like I've been trying to show you in the lecture and stuff, that made a big difference. There we go. Yeah, that works better. Um, so this time my X is my conjugate base. We get a number. I don't know, somebody's really fast, they can punch theirs in. Um, the units. Units are really important. At this point, we need a unit. So when we're plugging in here, I was leaving off my units. We're going to talk about units more on the next page. What are my units for this? Molarity. It is molarity. Thank you. All the little mice said molarity, which is moles per liter. Now you can write it as a big M, but I'm writing it as moles per liter because we're not done. We're going to now go to grams because that is what I asked for. Um, so everything that I'm plugging in on this page was molarity. And moles to grams, you guys hopefully are now familiar with your periodic table. I got 112. Um, Again, so make and check my math. And then the volume, this is actually the most asked question I get with buffers a day or two days or a week later. A buffer, the acid and the conjugate base, they are mixed together. These guys are in one solution. So Mary talked about equilibrium, that's what our theme is. They are together in one solution. So the volume is for both of them. So the 0.456 liters, I think is what I gave you on your handout. Um, and so we'd punch that in and hopefully get my answer, which was 5.06 grams. Uh, this question, I, I redid my notes yesterday while you guys were taking your test. And um, so if any of my numbers are wrong, please let me know. Usually somebody's pretty fast and we'll punch it in real quick and say, oh, yep, I got what you have. Or let, please let me know so I can correct it. Um, so they're really not that bad. We have another page and then we have a few things here at the bottom of this page, but um, I'm pausing, see if there's any questions before I choose a buffer. All right, I'm gonna erase. At least my top part. This is why I recommend before tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow morning, uh, before tomorrow's lecture, whenever you listen to it, do the first page of your study set. And if you're really good, do the first page of your study set, check it. I did post my answer key and do the worksheet. Have the worksheet done and be like, I've got buffers. I am ready to move on to titration. I've never taught it this way before, and I kind of had a moment last yesterday where I thought, what if I did this? So you guys get buffers. Um, titrations are challenging because there's a lot of steps to them, um, and buffers, buffers are really important. All right, uh, it then says, oh, there was a note before question number two that says the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. I don't use it. I don't use it for teaching. I no longer recommend it. I used it the first five years and I found my top math students could use it and use it correctly, but then they couldn't explain why their answer made sense. And then the students who were not great at math, they always struggled with that formula. And when I switched to doing this, which we're already familiar with, you guys could just plug in and solve. Um, so it's there, if you use that formula, you'll state you're using that formula, and there's always one person 
who likes that formula because somebody online uses it as they're learning it and it made more sense for them. Um, the reason, again, I always learned it that way. I found teaching that most students, this actually works better. Um, so choosing a buffer, I already mentioned how to choose a buffer, but there is another trick that's even easier is the pH is gonna be, again, this means around the pKa. So negative log of the Ka, pH is negative log of the hydronium. If the conjugate base, uh, if the conjugate base and the acid are similar, so they're close enough that we can disregard them, your Ka and your hydronium will be the same. So the negative log of each one would be similar. Um, the other way to do it is your Ka, oh, the exponent should be roughly the pH. So the negative four, get rid of the negative. Our pH should be around four, and it is. That's what a negative log does, is it pulls down the exponent. And some of you are really good with math, and you should be like, oh yeah, of course. Um, but I gave you a couple of examples there. So I gave you HCN and I gave you a Ka. And you could actually go through the math and figure out what the pKa is, but really all I care about is the exponent. HCN is gonna work as a buffer if we want a high pH, somewhere around 10. So 9, 10, 11. Um, sorry. This is vinegar, acetic acid. So our Ka is 1.8 e to negative 5. So this works at a pH around 5. So question number one, our pH came out as 4.57 for our buffer. And then the third one I gave you was, oh, the one that's going to work in our body because the exponent is negative 8. So this one's going to work at a pH range of 7 to 8 because of this exponent. So if the question asked, which of these would work as a buffer in your body, we would pick the H2PO4, except that's only half of the answer. Because a buffer is never one thing. A buffer is always two parts. Since this is a Ka, that is my acid. I'm gonna erase this so I can write. So H2PO4 is my weak acid. I think this was a question on your test. What's the conjugate base? Well, just take away one hydrogen. So the conjugate base would be HPO4, and we have a negative two. Now, I'm looking at my notes, and my brain just reminded me I think on yours, I put a sodium there. And I don't know if you remember way back a week ago, last Wednesday when I did my first lecture, I said whenever you see sodiums, cross them out. They don't affect pH at all. They're in the 1As. Sodium ions have no impact on pH. So it's easier just to cross them out. But when you cross them out, you have to put a charge there. So H2PO4 negative and HPO4 is its conjugate base. This is pretty much every cell in your body has those two ions in it. This buffers your cells. Uh, if you took biology or when you take biology, especially if you take cell biology um, or you work in a lab that does tissue culture stuff, you're gonna make a lot of this. Like somebody will be the tech in the lab and this is pretty much all they do all day is make this mixture up. Now, they don't actually make it in a one-to-one -one ratio. In our body, this is actually kind of cool. Um, in our body, the ratio, you don't need to know this, 
the ratio is a one to four ratio. So the question to ponder, why do we have four times more of the conjugate base? And the reason is these guys are resisting everything you do to your body, to your cells. They're trying to resist the change. It goes back up to our original definition. What is a buffer? It resists change. So if you added a base to your body, this guy's going to neutralize the base to keep the pH nice and simple. This guy's job is because your body is assaulted all day long by what you eat, by your thoughts, and they acidify your body. Um, and so there's one place that talked about that our body is an acid shock absorber because we are just constantly acidifying it. And so this conjugate base is always trying to buffer it. And when it buffers it, it just becomes the H2PO4 negative. Um, and so that's why the lab that's due today, hopefully you're at least thinking about some of these, it was a seven day challenge. Um, I, I've enjoyed, I've only gotten to read a few of the labs um, and having done this, everybody has an oops day. Um, and so they've been really funny. Those of you who are honest, and I hope you're all honest in there, uh, we all try our best. And that's all that it is, is to try your best. And, and sometimes there are people who like are really inspired and they don't have an oops day and, and then they keep going. And that's why there's that 30 days challenge um, to keep going with that. Or a couple people said they really started incorporating more fruit. So can you keep it up? and do three pieces of fruit a day or doing a salad every day, can you do it? Um, and it's worth a try. It's extra points that you'll get at the end, at the final, and every point is always worthwhile. But it's a bigger picture of, um, it was something, Ashley, again, I got to read her thing. The amount of processed food that you guys are a generation, you're, you're predicted to live shorter than me because I did not grow up on processed food. Um, processed food started showing up, um, but my mom actually cooked and processed food just acidifies our body. Um, but then your challenge that hopefully you've started, you're supposed to start today, is either with gratitude or service and all that stuff. And so I have a little video of my thinking there um, that our actions actually have an effect on our pH also. Um, everything's all connected. And so for a week, you're gonna either practice gratitude or service or giggling. Um, giggles, right? The best thing, better than vitamin C is giggling. Um, there's a story, I can't remember the guy's name, and he had terminal cancer. He got diagnosed, was told he had like a month or three months to live, I think it was a brain cancer. And he went out and he bought all these videos, the funniest videos he could find, like old videos, and locked himself in his room for like a week and just watched funny video, videos and just laughed. Um, the guy's still alive today and goes around and gives inspirational talks, but laughter is so awesome. And so that's why tomorrow I'm hoping you all like rub your nose and draw cheeks and, and like Juliana and myself, you've made some kind of rodent ears or you can be anything, I don't care. Well, you can be any kind of fun, fun, fun celebration. All right, so that's choosing a buffer, three body buffers. Did anybody do the math? Was my math okay? before I erase. We're good? Okay, so a thumbs up. Um, so this is one. So this is in our body. Every cell in your body has that. Uh, number two are the amino acids. Yeah, my background is biochemistry. So my Chem 106, this is what we do. An amino acid, this varies, so we won't worry about that, but it's an acid group, right? So there's my acid, and it's an amino group. So there's my base, there's my acid. So it, it works as an acid and a base. Um, and so it is a buffer in system within our blood. Once it's made into the proteins, the amino acids can't do the buffering thing. But that is our second one. And then the third one, the big one, you guys already know, if you watched my videos a little bit, um, carbonic acid 
and it's conjugate HCO3 negative. So this is in our blood. And this keeps our pH of our blood around, well, 7.35 would be like perfect, right? So we all wanna stay on the alkaline end. So it's a really small range um, that we stay in a happy place. Uh, the full equation here is H2CO3 we've talked about can break down into H2O and CO2. And this is your lungs will regulate the level of CO2. That's a double arrow. And then you have a double arrow here that goes to hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. And this is your kidneys. Your kidneys regulate the levels of those. So two things can happen. Um, there's respiration that can affect this. That's why I'm hoping some of you will try the meditation. I know those who've been with me before, um, it's like a give me for that. So you can try something different or you can meditate for a week. We should all be by the end of the term. Meditation is amazing and, and there's no wrong way to meditate but it is uh, an individual thing and it does require some quiet time, but it could be listening um, to music. So let's say you uh, have emphysema, you have injured your lungs somehow, like from smoking, you do not get rid of the CO2. High levels of CO2 build up and Le Chatelier pushes this that way and you end up with high levels of hydrogen which means your pH drops. And um, so anybody who has a compromised lung function, you end up in acidosis because your pH drops. Um, interesting to me, because my last name's Sherpa, uh, when you go to high elevation um, and you're breathing deeper, when you get sick and you're breathing faster, um, so you guys all know like when you get a fever and you start breathing faster, right? Uh, you will actually, lose CO2. So when I go to high elevation, my breathing, you're just like, I, I remember, gosh, we were probably at 17,000 um, feet. So like 5,000 meters. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take 10 steps and then I'll breathe for 10 seconds. And that lasted for five steps. And then it became like two steps. And then I would take 10 breaths. But basically, you're trying to bring in oxygen that's not there. And so you're just breathing out so much CO2. So this whole thing does the opposite. It shifts this way. You drop your hydrogen. And you can actually send yourself into higher levels than that, which becomes dangerous, which is alkalosis. Um, on the other end, this is where diet affects. So if you're eating a poor diet of sugar, highly processed food, a lot of animal products, um, which Americans just eat too many animal products, that will decrease, that will cause an acidosis, high hydrogen, and will shift this way, and your lungs are trying to work. Your, your kidneys are working over time, trying to get rid of all the extra hydrogen. Um, and so it's, yeah, treat your body. Your body is a temple. Treat it with love. All right, is there any questions? I moved on to page two. And I'm going to erase some of my pink spots. All right, let's see. I should have the brown door. So I'm on page 22. And it says something about buffer capacity. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, buffer capacity is how good is the buffer? How much acid or base can we add to it? And this is why I'm the mouse. So you guys can all be a dancing mouse. Um, we're going to finally write an equation. So this is something I was saying to several of you before the exam yesterday. And I don't know if you noticed on the first page we did, I never wrote a balanced equation. I didn't do any ice charts. So. The, the rule, the mantra, mantras are much nicer than rules, for buffers and titrations, until you see, unless you see, a, if you see a strong acid or a strong base, so HCl or NaOH 
then you need to do write the reaction. And we're going to do mice charts now. So the ice chart is there. There's an extra step. That's why it's called a mice chart. And I wish I had made that up. Maybe I did many years ago. All right. Question 1A, we have, let me just write it out. So I have it up here when I get to B and I need my units. And 0.245. And it's all in 275 milliliters. Again, the most ask question a week from now is about the volume. The volume goes to both parts of the buffer. The buffer is already mixed together in one place. This is my acid. The one with the sodium, that's the conjugate base. I recommend you always label the two parts of your acid so you plug things in correctly. For those of you who are with me in 222, remember we did gas laws and we'd make those nice little lists? Kind of think of it like that. I don't, you know, way over on the one side. I'm writing my Ka value. So I have it here, 4.0 e to negative 10. All right. So no equation yet, because there's no strong yet. It is a buffer, because I have both pieces. It's also, you know, it's a buffer because it says the word buffer and it's an evil buffer. It's a buffer. It's going to kill the rodents. So we don't really want to do this buffer, but let's pretend like it's a test question. You're showing your work. You're going to solve Ka equals, you state this formula. Every time you write it down, you deepen that neural pathway. So you've got this. You're like, oh, I know how to do this. You plug in all those pieces. We don't do anything with the volume yet. Extra information. So ignore it. We need it for part B. We plug in. This is my only X. Because I know my ass, I'm, I know my base. If you're really fast at math, you can do it. So you can tune me out. Um, I'm pretty confident. My pH comes out as 9.36. If you want, you can do the math or you can ponder this question. And this is the thing that's awesome with uh, buffers. Does your answer make sense? Absolutely, it does. Even though some of you are nodding your head no. Remember the exponent? My exponent is 10. So my pH should be somewhere around 10, plus or minus. It's not going to be exactly 10 because there's those other numbers there. Um, and so, yeah, it's not 3.21, it's 9.36, so we're good. All right, we're gonna do part B. That's the point of the dancing mice. On part B, I suddenly add HCl. Something has to neutralize the HCl. So this is really simple. It is not the HCN because you cannot have an acid plus an acid. So it must be the NACN. So a couple things with this. One, on part A, no equation. A buffer does not react with itself. A buffer lives in harmony like your body. But as soon as you add a strong, these guys are the evils, the HCl and the NaOH, the buffer is going to protect us. You pick which part of the buffer is going to neutralize it. So the NaCN, this is my base. This is my acid. Now, this was a question Aaron asked me a week ago, and I answered it incorrectly. He asked me about limiting reactants. And I said, oh, we don't do anything with that this term. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Um, we didn't do anything last week with it, with equilibrium. Strongs are one-way reactions. This is not going to be an equilibrium reaction. All right, basically the hydrogen is going to knock the sodium out, and we're going to get HCN. 
and sodium chloride. You can also, well, leave the sodium on because it'll make it make more sense with part A. Sodium chloride, we can ignore. It has no effect on pH, so you can ignore that. We are now going to make a mice chart. So I recommend you do the first page of your study set. I recommend you go back and do these two pages, do the first page of your study set, do your worksheet, and then when you come tomorrow at one o'clock or whenever you watch the video for titrations, you've got buffers down, you've got your worksheet done. Um, but do the study set page first because I have the answer key there so you'll know you did it right. All right, the key with this step, the M is to find moles. So the charts we were doing on the midterm, we were doing in molarity. Um, we're not going to do KPs for a couple of weeks, so don't worry about pressure. We won't even see it for, I, we see it again in two weeks. Um, we'll worry about it when we get to it then. Um, the chart has to be done in moles. Last week, I could take the shortcut and do it in molarity because the volume never changed. If the volume changes, molarity changes, so we have to be in moles. How do I know the volume changed? Because I just added some HCl. I had 275, I added 25 milliliters, I just changed my volume. So how we do this step, take the information from up above, 0.225 molar, and if you multiply it by the volume, that was over here. So this is the 225 and my volume, that's where I'm getting this and you'll get a number. Let me go back to blue. 0 0.0619. Oh, and look at that, there's a unit. So students who had me before take me seriously when I say, you gotta show your units. You all need to be taking me seriously. In the charts, you have to show your units. Please show your units. All right, we know the HCl. I'm gonna do the HCl in a different color. Um, it gave you in this part, you have 0 .0, you have 25 milliliters, right? So 0 0.025 and it's 0 0.50 molar. All right, some of you are gonna have to learn to write a little bit smaller because otherwise you're going to be taking up 10 pages of notebook paper. Uh, so this is going to be 0 0.0125. So all we're doing is getting to moles. So that this step, the ice step, is moles. So that's all the M step is. But, there is a but. It's a buffer. There are no zeros and buffers. We do have the HCN we know from up above. It is 0.245 and the volume is 0.275. So that is from up above. You, in these buffer problems, you know the initial of both sides. Um, let me give you the number there, Point zero six seven four. So a question often comes up at this point, because you guys did really good studying last week. It's been a whole week, right? And you're like, but there's no zero. How do I know which side to add to and which side do I subtract to? You know, because there's only one arrow. Remember, it goes forward. So we're gonna subtract and we're gonna add, but there, we know what we're subtracting. We have two numbers here and one of them is smaller. So you all learn limiting reactant.
whichever number on your reactant side is smaller, that is your change. So we can write it here. So this is the smallest mole. That's your change. So we're going to subtract 0 0.0125. We're going to subtract 0 0.0125. So this one's zero. It's gone, which is good. That was the whole purpose of this, was to get rid of the HCl. If I'm subtracting on this side, what am I going to do on the other side? You're going to add 0 0.0125. I have to say, I still haven't gotten the hang of all the colors that I get to work with. I space myself much better when I have chalk. All right, let's go ahead and do the numbers. So this would be 0 0.0494. Once I subtract, that one's zero. And then, oh, we can do green over here. This one you're adding. Um, so the two biggest mistakes that happen with buffers, and again, do it tonight. Do it, do it tonight and tomorrow. Get the worksheet done. Do the work, do the first page of the study set, check your answers, do the worksheet, and be ready to move on. The two mistakes that are made with buffers, you do not have a zero. You have both sides of the equation, and this is a plus. So you subtract from this side, we add to that side. It is so easy to forget that. In fact, if you looked at your teacher's notes, actually, I think it happened on the study set, you'll see I did something wrong and I had to cross it out because you get in the habit of always subtracting. All right, we're almost done. So label what your pieces are. This is the sodium cyanide. So this is the conjugate base. This is the HCN. This is the acid. I am labeling like this for a reason, because we are now going to plug into Ka. We're going back up to this. We're just plugging in new numbers and solving for x. It doesn't, this is not the equilibrium equation. This is to get to the numbers to plug into Ka. There is a second reaction that goes on. You do not need to write out the second reaction. The second reaction is just gets us to this formula. So state the formula. So conjugate base goes in there. This is my X. And there's my acid. And you solve. The K is the same as part A. Um, and you'll get a new X. And once you find X, X is your hydronium. From there, you can go to pH. I know I'm standing in front of the board. And hopefully my number I know is right. We're going to say if it makes sense. So there is a question that every single one of you should be pondering to ask. I'm pausing to see if anybody has a question. What happened to sodium chloride? The sodium chloride has no impact on pH because it has a sodium, which is a 1A, and it has a chloride, which is the conjugate of a strong acid. So like on the test, when you're asked, is it neutral, uh, acid, or base, sodium chloride has no effect. So that's a great question, Harrison. So just ignore it. You know, like how we used to cross out solids and liquids, you're going to ignore that part. It has no impact on the buffer or the pH. It's just there so we have our balanced equation. Another quick comment, these balanced equations are awesome for acids, buffers, titrations. They're always one, 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 one with stoichiometry. We don't have to worry about like the missing two that I did yesterday. Um, did I answer your question, Harrison? Um, anybody else question?
because there is a question somebody needs to be asking, or I'll ask it. So I made a comment way back on the previous page that when we plug into K way back the very first day, what unit do we normally plug into K? It needs to be molarity, moles per liter. Yet I just plugged in moles. So I'm going to show you a trick. It is a trick. And about half of you get it and go, oh, I love that. That's awesome. And about half of you are like, why'd you do that? Um, and it doesn't matter. You'll get to the same answer. Is the volume that would go down here that, sorry, these are moles. They should be molarity. You would divide, let me move that up. This is now the total volume. So 300 milliliters, 275 plus 25 from the strong acid. There we go. This is in the same thing. It is divided also by the same volume. This works only with buffers, this trick, because it's a ratio of conjugate base to acid. If you are dividing them both by the same number, you still have the same ratio. So you can use mole to mole ratio, or you can do molarity, molarity. The chart, the subtraction, limiting reactant is moles. You have to get to moles, and then you can leave it in moles, or you can go back to molarity. You can ponder that. You can ask me like in office hours, um, some of you see it, and some of you are like, I'm just going to put the volume in. If it is an x squared problem, so the problems we did yesterday, there is no ratio. You have to be in molarity. We're going to do a lot with this tomorrow. So you can think about that, um, and hopefully it will start making sense over the next few days. Um, and again, if you do that first page of the study set, kind of like a broken record, um, and do your worksheet, like in the next 24 hours or whatever, that's, that like gives you over the weekend, you don't have to worry about it. I tried to make your schedule so you guys had your weekends to breathe a little bit so that we're like, this is kind of, yeah, we're in school during the week and then you have time on the weekend to breathe. Um, you know, a comment somebody asked me earlier, the, the weekend would be a great time to start looking into your famous chemist. Maybe like research them some, maybe even write a page or two. You're only writing three, four, or five pages. Um, but that that is two weeks from yesterday. You're doing your famous person because this term moves fast. Um, all right. I am also going to be asking you if the answer makes sense. I'm not sure if I asked you on there. Um, and of course it does. I think I asked you to explain why it makes sense. We are comparing Sorry, I see if you're still seeing Do you see this side of the board? Enough, yeah. You're comparing the pH. So we added a strong acid, HCl. So it decreased the pH. Right? If you add a strong acid, the pH should drop, and it did. If I had added NaOH, a strong base, my pH should have gone up. So that is what I'm looking for when I say, does this make sense? But there's a second piece. So adding a strong acid, but it's always a but. Only a wee bit. This is a small change. It, if you had had only one piece of the buffer there, if there had only been one, one species present, your pH would have changed by like four or five whole numbers. Um, and that is because it's a buffer.
buffers resist change in pH. That's the point of a buffer. So we added a strong acid, my pH decreased, but only a wee bit. A question that came up several times last week or early this week was about sig figs. And I wanna remind you, um, please show pHs to two decimal places because of this. Um, so we can see that there is a change, but it is only small. So please always report pHs two decimal places. All right, I'm gonna do the next part, unless there's a question or you guys can start working on question 2A and 2B. I'm gonna pause for a moment and watch the butterflies outside my window. If there's no question, I'm about to erase. I'm just writing out the stuff for the questions so I know what I'm doing. So it is a buffer problem because the word buffer shows up in the question towards the end. You can also recognize it's a buffer. HF is my acid. It's a weak acid. So I'm going to write WA. Buffers have to be the weak acid and the conjugate base. That's it. That's all there is to buffers. My question for you, do we need to write a balanced equation? And in unison, everybody's saying no. The reason it is no, no equation yet, no balanced reaction. Do you see a strong acid or base there? If you do not see HCl or NaOH, and I stay with those two, you just write out Ka. Just state the formula. We don't need an equation. It is this, it's a buffer, right? 10 to negative pH is your hydronium. So you cannot just plug in the 4.05, you have to change the pH to the hydronium. The acid is up there, so this is going to be the, I can write it down here. Um, so we would have Ka equals, the conjugate base is my unknown. That's what I'm solving for. The hydronium is 10 to the negative 4.05. Again, I highly recommend that you write it like that because you're not approximating. It's neater, it's clean, it doesn't take up much space. And then the acid is the 0.245. You plug in, you get a number for X. I recommend if when, you're, when you watch this at home, you pause and solve it yourself and then watch and see, or if you get stuck. Um, a reminder, whenever you solve for X, state what it equals. It's not always hydronium, especially if it's not hydronium. So my X is my conjugate base. 
I'm gonna give you the number I got. Just in the interest of time. Um, we're not done because you have to go to grams. So you guys now change your moles to grams and then the volume. So you would show your step. I'm not going to show it because then you all just copy it. I'm going to show this, show your work. Show. You can do it right now. You should get my answer, 22.9 grams. So change your moles to grams. You have to factor in the volume. Actually, now I'm going to show it. There it is. That volume goes there, the 0.275 liters. And that is another common mistake I will see from students is, um, yeah, it goes there. This, this is moles per one liter. Uh, if you can, if you want, you can put a one there. We have to get rid of that leader by multiplying by the volume that is true for this question. All right, so that's part A. For part B, we're suddenly bloop, NaOH. We have to write a balanced equation. All right. I'm going to have to erase and move this up. Yeah. If there's no questions, I'm going to move it up. When you add NaOH, which part of the buffer does it react with? It's, it's actually a pretty simple question, but you want to always ask yourself that question. We're adding the NaOH, it's going to react with acid. Because the NaOH is a base. So, the hydrogen and sodium switch places, we get NaF and H2O. And we can ignore the H2O, it's just there, it's balance the equation. So H and OH makes H2O. All right. If you see NaOH or HCl, write your balanced equation. Draw your mice, you can doodle mice, and then do your mice chart. So it's like a pop quiz. Oh, you know what? That would get everybody to come to this. If I like said, I'm gonna get pop quizzes, and you get a bonus point during lecture if you answer a question I throw out there for you. Um, would that be great? Maybe I should. Should we try it? Yes. All right, you guys ready? So, what goes into the M? What are we gonna do for the M row? Find moles. Who said that, Aaron? Was that you, I guess? Cause you're gonna pop up whoever answers first. You're gonna find moles. All right. So Aaron gets the bonus point today. We used to do a bonus point every class. We had a break and my one student would go home to eat. He's actually now a doctor. Um, and we would have a bet on the board of what time he would show up because it was an hour and a half lecture and he would come back depending on what his mom made for dinner at like these random times. And so everybody would, it was so funny. Everybody was in, whoever got it, we get the bonus point. Um, and then we'd ask what his mom made for dinner. So, all right. So you're gonna take the HF, that 0.245, molar and times its volume. 
And remember, you also know the NAF. That's what we solved for in the previous question. So we got 22 point, I'm, you can either do the molarity or the um, mass. You can do the mass. Remember, that's what we solved for in part A. But I need to go to moles. So whatever my molar mass was, which was 42 grams to a mole. All right. And you get numbers. Let me get a number over there. You get a big number over there. Um, so the capital M means we're solving for moles and the I step is going to be in moles. And that's because it's not a true ice chart. The ice charts were when we were doing equilibrium. These are actually, this is, if you actually have a book uh, and you go way back to chapter whatever, three or four, when you learn limiting reactants, this is, there's like six or eight different ways to teach limiting reactants. This is actually one of the ways. Um, it makes no sense to most students way back when. All right, the NaOH, 0.025. It's kind of laughing to say when I went to the dentist, they check your temperature and I'm like, oh, because I bike there, you know, so you usually get warm, but um, I, I'm pretty sure if somebody checked my temperature right now, it's like 100 because something we're teaching that you get really warm. So that's whatever that is. I'm going to pause questions to that point. They're always with a buffer. You've got something on both sides. There's no zero. We know which way it goes because it's a one-way reaction. So we're going to subtract on this side. We're not subtracting X. So here, Aaron, you don't get an answer again. Once you get a bonus point, you don't get another one. What am I subtracting? Do you subtract 0 0.0125 moles? Yeah, we're subtracting this guy, the limiting reactant. But, Harrison, to get your full point, you have to keep answering. What do I do on the other side? You would add 0 0.0125. Oh, you got it. All right. I have a question. Uh, go ahead, Margaret. Um. Is the strong acid or the strong base, whatever you add, is that always going to be the limiting reactant or is it just going to depend? Thank you. That is an awesome question. Um, on, your on your worksheet, yes. And that first page of your study set, yes. However, if it was not, so, so I'm answering that way on buffer problems that you're going to be solving for me, the answer is yes. Um, great question. The NaOH or the HCl is your limiting reactant. And I want to answer it that way for buffers, for buffers, because if it's not, you did something wrong in your math. So that way you know to go back and check your math. And it is, it's really hard because there's going to be sometimes three zeros. So keeping track of your zeros is really important. However, what it would mean if this was actually 0.125, let's say we added 250 milliliters, this becomes your limiting reactant, the HF. It means you overwhelmed the buffer. In terms of your body, you pass out. <laughs> so it's kind of like what happens to us when we overstress our body, our body passes out. But you can add too much of a strong acid or of something and overwhelm the buffer. When we get to titrations, it's going to be when you miss the titration. So I don't remember, Margaret, who you had for 221, but those of you who had 221 with myself um, or with Bernadette or with Dr. Russell, you would have taken it in the fall or the winter and you did a titration. And if you remember getting that endpoint perfect, and you all probably did it one time where you missed the endpoint and the color was all wrong, 
and that would be when you you added too much um, and that's where we're going with this but that's a great question um, and in that actually by her asking a question hopefully you all did your math and we get 0 0.0549 yeah you can just cross this out or you can do the zero um, if you cross it out do it lightly so you can see your work or if somebody's asking you a question all right this side you add my recommendation is at this point you make sure you label oh it's a mole not a mo which is like a unit of measurement i think in geography uh, this is my acid this time because it's the hf this is the sodium fluoride this is the conjugate base because we're now going to plug just straight into the ka formula so that that's going to go on top um i want to remind you because it does seem redundant and that's going to go on the bottom and you're going to solve this time for the hydronium you're going to state that formula every time you use it because it will ingrain this in you when you get to the midterm you'll just be like cruising through this what i see on the second midterm is i see the highest grades of the year it is the hardest midterm of the year and the students who just focus and do the work and get it they get hundreds and then i have nothing in between and the people who don't do the work they get like 50s um and so it is clearly showing your steps. So you guys would show plugging in. I'm being a little lazy at the moment because I'm sweating here. Um, all right, we can do one more bonus. Although it's not really a fair bonus. Do I have to change to molarity? And you'll have to explain why. And he can't, here's an area he can't answer. Anybody else want to answer that one? Uh, no, you don't have to change to molarity because isn't the volume going to be the same for each one? So it's going to be the same ratio? Yes. That's Margaret, I think, because your name's still showing up there. So look at that. Now, see, everybody, come to lecture. You need a bonus point. Um, if, if when you plugged in, and if you're not seeing this, you don't write this down. I'm just going to do it really fast. What's my volume? 300 again? That would be over 0.3 liters times X. And then my acid. So since you're doing it twice, why bother? Um, so in a buffer, you can plug in moles for both of them or molarity. Your hydronium is always molarity, always. Uh, and then we get a pH, 4.15. And I just realized I have time for one more bonus question. And so if some, somebody, there's other people still here. Why does the answer make sense? I mean, your teacher did it. But <laughs> of course it makes sense because my teacher did it. But your teacher makes mistakes as many of you learned on the test yesterday. It makes sense because it is close to the exponent. Uh, yes. or you almost got it. That's half of it. You, I mean, give you a hint. So you are partly right. The problem is it, it was a really hard question. Um, you have to compare it to the pH in part A. And in part A, let's do it over here, the pH was 4.05. So what Ashley said, just to make sure everybody's got it, in a buffer, the pH should be around the Ka exponent, which was a four. So my pH is still a four-ish. My question, and it wasn't a, a very well worded, why did my pH change? That's why I'm, I, that's what I'm asking. If you can explain why the pH change makes sense. So 
So we went from a 4.05 to 4.15. Um, um, because you asked the NAOS, right? You add a strong base. So the BS will go up? That's half of it. Um. So can you get the other half of that? There's a but. Remember I wrote but. It only, you look at the previous one on top of the page, 1B. People watching at home are like, oh my god, I know the answer. I know what she's looking for but only Jim or Ashley uh, strong acid goes the pH goes down but only a wee bit because of the buffer yeah oh so my the God. pH only changed a wee bit so sorry I use the word we we mean small so actually Jim maybe that was my uh, use of my English so the pH only changes a very small amount because of the buffer. And this again is why you have to give your pHs to two decimal places. Because it will, and it is why you'll know you did the problem right. It should go up because you added a base, but it only went up a wee bit. And like on the previous one, you also know yeah, we're in the range of this. So I think they both deserve a full point, all the guys who, who answered. Thank you. Um, I'm done, unless there's a question. Um, tomorrow we will tackle titration. And so my recommendation is that finish your lab that's due today. And then uh, it depends when you guys study. Some of you study at one in the morning, some of you study tomorrow morning. I would tackle the first page of your study set. And then if you're filling it, if you're like, yes, I've got this, move on to the worksheet. And um, you can even do it with me tonight in office hours or tomorrow morning before the next lecture. Because tomorrow at one o'clock, I am moving on to titrations. And if you've got buffers, it will make tomorrow glorious. Can you imagine? Titration's so glorious. If there's no questions, I'm gonna stop recording and hope I did this right. No questions?